Okay, we're back. I'm gonna get right on to this now. This is a... First of all, it, this is an antique. Show sterling you. silver. Five and a half. Okay, so it's a five and a half, turn it around. But you don't have to wear it as a ring if you don't want to. No, you don't have... Well, well you can put on a chain, yeah. Yeah. All right, so this piece um, goes above and beyond what is, what is known about Robert Oppenheimer. What is known is that he is a very celebrated American theatrical, theoretical, oh my God, a physicist whose intelligence rivals even that of Albert Einstein. He has contributed greatly to many areas of science, but one of his most famous works was an unclassified top secret document. This document was a co-op that he worked on with Albert Einstein and the minds of the two of these gentlemen just blew everything out of the water. This writing was on the relationship with inhabitants of celestial bodies. And the six-page document is the first time the, the phrase extraterrestrial biological entities was ever used. In short, these entities were of extraterrestrial origins, but were living, breathing, had intelligence, and could communicate. Okay? Now, you can do your research on the matter yourself if you want to. This document is not what I'm here to discuss. As you guys can tell, I'm reading. <laughs> Rather, I'm here to discuss the secret life of Robert Oppenheimer. It's the life that he did not allow even his closest colleagues to find out about. Instead, he, he had a select few friends to whom he divulged the secret. Unfortunately, when he passed away, some of these friends entered into the agreement with the government, with top government officials. They sold him out for money, which is a really nasty thing to do. But you know what they say, there's no enemy like a best friend. That's pretty screwed up. Who says that? Okay. I wrote that book. <clears throat> I know. Either way, Robert had a secret life where he was actually making contact with the EBs on a regular... EBs. EBs. E oh, is that how they say it? E yeah. Yeah, EB. Like, if I don't know if you've ever read... Um, I think his name is William Cooper's book. Okay. Um, Behold a Pale Horse. I was Horse. just saying EBE. -E. No, it's... It, no, they say it EB. E um, Behold a Pale Horse. By William Cooper. You um, should read that book. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the, he worked for the government. And he's, they, they called him EBs. On a regular and consistent basis. He was in contact with them so much that he was actually able to secure, source of, to secure a source of alien DNA that he used by infusing it with his own body. This gave incredible abilities, including full psychic awakening, the ability to communicate with foreign races of extraterrestrials in thought form, the ability to create matter and life in the palm of his hands, the ability to travel in time, advanced alien healing, extreme protection from all parasitic and dark entities, and the ability to see and identify other alien races on Earth in their human form, disguises, a.k.a. the reptilian race. Okay. Now, um, alien healing is incredible. It is. There's, there's no bullshit there. Um, I've often told you guys a story of the newscaster who was going, she had six months to live of cancer, and, uh, totally healed. In Casadega, or we, well, we learned, no, 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 we learned more about it in Casadega. She was in Florida. Yeah. But she, um, the item that did the healing that they use most often is from Tibet, yeah. which is strange. But not so much when you look at the Tibetan history and some of their forms and stuff. Definitely look alien. So I definitely think there's a. Do you think the aliens there. gave it to them, or do you think the aliens learned it from the Tibetans? I think the aliens gave stuff to them that yeah. they couldn't quite understand at that time. Right. It's and I and I think they liked maybe some of their art or things they made. Right. Because they put energy into them that did cure cancer on this woman. Like that's no bullshit. No. Yeah. I remember we um, did a radio show on it. Yes. Years ago. Yes. I have. Um. I think I have a piece of that left. And at four hundred dollars, and that guy from Australia got it and was healing all kinds of people. Oh yeah, he yeah, but you know, yeah, he I know that he made a big fuss. Yeah, he he cured someone of AIDS. Yeah, with one of my pieces, and people are saying, "How dare she say that?" I'm not saying it. He said it. I never told him I could do that. He came back to me, and said he cured his friend of AIDS, and that the guy that was dying on the deathbed that he cured him too. That he's fine now. Now, I didn't go over there and see that, so I can't tell you whether he's lying to me or not, but he spent about four or $5,000 on the with the website, and he came back with that, like, two months later. So, you know, apparently it did work for him. 
Um, <clears throat> but I never said I could do that, though. Now, eventually, Mr. Oppenheimer became so powerful in his ability that he was able to create pieces that were infused with alien DNA simply by holding them in the palm of his hands. He created a few of these pieces, but unfortunately, his backstabbing cohort, or maybe just one of them, sold out, sold him out to the government as soon as he passed away. I'm sure he's rolling in his grave at the thought of the government having this power, having his power. He always stayed one step ahead of them and never allowed them to know the full capabilities of his power. He basically told them what he wanted, what he wanted them to know, and had them dangling on a string. Either way, um, most of these items were sold to CIA or even NASA. We're not sure which. Definitely not the FBI, because they're, you know. Um, there are still a very few that are left circulating out there in the masses of people on Earth. Some are held by, in by the ranks of secret societies, such as, such as the Freemasons, but not this one. We have this one, and we're making it available to you. It will give you the same power that Robert Oppenheimer had before he died, minus the ability to create more alien DNA pieces. Even without his ability, this piece is unconventional and extremely powerful. It's not something that you're going to want to miss out on. So that's it. It's sterling silver. And what size did you say it was? Uh, six and a half. Now, didn't he make this for the uh, a CIA female Manchurian can candidate? He originally to protect her. Originally, yes. Originally to protect her. Because she wanted she wanted out, and they wouldn't let her out. She's she's actually dead now. Well, yeah, but and the reason it looks black in the center there, like a flower, is because he had always felt that her mind was taken over by a satanic darkness created by the government that took her soul from that of white light to darkness by turning her into a killer That's and surprising. prostitute, a killer and a prostitute both. So she was kind of like Candy Jones, but it was not Candy Jones. You don't know who Candy Jones is? No, is that, is that black TV host? What? Oh. No, this is a white woman. She, um... She was uh, mind controlled by the Ooh, CIA. I don't remember. Oh yeah, you gotta look her up. Long day. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's that one, and we will. Eat.